Hey guys, uh, I'm in the classroom to give you a lesson on Vesper theory, which is the way that we are going to determine the three dimensional shapes of molecular substances. So Vesper, the acronym V-S-E-P-R theory, um, stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Um, and basically it's gonna allow us to predict the three dimensional shapes of very simple central atom molecules. So not really big at molecules, but smaller ones. Um, so think about the parts of the word. Valence shell makes sense. Those are the bonding electrons. Um, electron pair repulsion. Well, electrons naturally repel because they're negatively charged. So the valence electrons in the um, the valence electrons are going to repel each other and get as far apart as possible. And that's what's going to help determine the shape of the molecule. Um, so there's a couple things to keep in mind. Yes, we need to know about what's referred to as a bonding orbital, an orbital that has only one electron, because that's where you're going to have another atom form a covalent bond. But non-bonding orbitals are important as well. A non-bonding orbital is an orbital that already has two electrons in. But because that orbital has electrons, it's gonna cause repulsion. And so it influences the shape of molecules as well. And then um, the overriding idea is those orbitals with electrons, whether they're one or two electrons around that central atom, are gonna try and get as far apart as possible. Okay, so when we talk about orbitals, um, we're gonna start talking, we're gonna use the phrase electron domains. Okay, so an electron domain consists of any of these three that I have listed down here. So a non-bonding orbital is one electron domain. Um, a single bond, so an orbital that forms a bond with one atom is one electron domain. And then here's the part that gets a little confusing. We're gonna deal with double and triples um, later. We're gonna focus on single bonds first, but one domain is assigned to any double bond or any triple bond. So regardless of how many pairs of electrons are being shared between two atoms, that's one domain. So a double bond is one domain. A triple bond is one domain. And any single bond is one domain and any non-bonding orbital is one domain. So it's really the number of domains that's gonna let us predict the shape of the molecule. All right, so the other thing that we need to talk about is over here on this board. Um, once we start arranging those valence orbitals around the central atom, you're gonna have two kinds of geometry because remember those electrons are gonna try and be as far apart as possible. So you can have something called electron geometry, which is the geometry of all the orbitals, both bonding and non-bonding. Um, so that's the electron geometry. But when we describe what the molecule actually looks like, we're focused on the molecular geometry. So we're focused on just where the bonding orbitals are. Where are the other atoms that are attached to that central atom? The electron geometry is going to give rise to the molecular geometry. So we gotta know the electron geometry first, then we can predict what the molecular geometry will be. It may be the same or it may be different. The thing that's gonna control whether or not it's the same or different is non-bonding orbitals. So if I have pairs of electrons around a central atom, the molecular geometry is gonna wind up being different than the electron geometry. All right, so let's get started. You have an organizer that has all the groups listed on here. So the groups, one through seven, wait a second, why don't I have eight? because eight is noble gases, they're not gonna form bonds, so we're not gonna worry about shapes. Um, so we're only worried about groups one through seven. Remember, those are the representative elements, groups one through seven. Um, so I'm actually gonna start with group four. Um, if you have gotten any manipulatives out, for example, I told you guys that you could get marshmallows um, out, 
this is now the time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use marshmallows. I'm gonna use a big marshmallow for my central atom. I'm gonna use smaller marshmallows for the bonding atoms. And I'm gonna, of course, use toothpicks as the bonds to connect them. So if there is a marshmallow on both ends, that's a bonding orbital. If there is a non-bonding orbital, there's gonna be a stick but there's not gonna be a marshmallow attached to it because this stick represents two electrons already. Okay, so that's kind of where we're going with all of this. So starting with group four, let's take a look. We want to look at the structure around a molecule from group four. So carbon's the first element. I'm gonna use hydrogen, hydrogen for everything. So what's the shape of CH4 gonna be. That's what we're looking for. So before we do anything, I want you to think about the box diagram, okay? Um, carbon, the valence electron configuration for carbon should look like this, okay? What about the Lewis structure that you learned how to draw for CH4? So carbon, we said, is gonna have four bonds, right? Each bond to one of the four hydrogens. So four bonds here, but if you look at the orbital diagram for carbon, something's a little weird, isn't it? Stop and think about that for a second. What's going on? Why shouldn't carbon only form two bonds because I have a pair already and I have two lone ones. Well, that's because something happens that's called hybridization. When an atom forms bonds, the valence orbitals hybridize. Now, where have you heard hybridize before? Maybe in bio, you talk about hybrid plants or hybrid hybrid roses. As a gardener, I hear about different kinds of hybrid roses being made every year. How do they form a new hybrid? Well, they take, for roses, for example, they take the roots of one rose and graft it to the stem of another rose. And so as the new um, plant grows, it has both genetic material from both plants. So that's what a hybrid orbital is. A hybrid orbital is going to take all of the characteristics of the S and the P valence orbitals and combine them and merge them into something new. So here's one last note for you. So hybridization is going to occur when the valence orbitals with electrons merge to create new orbitals. So these orbitals are all going to be equal. Remember that an S is normally spherical. So an S orbital looks like that. A P orbital is two lobed. So a P orbital looks like that. And there could be three of them, right? S, two, P, six, one S, three Ps. So you could have as many as three P orbitals involved in this hybridization. Well, what's going to happen is the characteristics of the S and the P's are going to merge and they're going to create a new type of orbital. So you're going to get, here's kind of the funky looking thing. It's actually going to look like a balloon. So you're going to get a very big piece of one side. So all the S characters kind of going into one side of the orbital. So whereas the P isn't really directional, it's got left and right sides or top and bottom sides, a hybrid orbital is actually directional. It's oriented to point in just one direction um, because the other orbital shrinks down to almost nothing. So the two electrons, when you get bonding, the two electrons are gonna be in this part of the orbital, not that part of the orbital, okay? So that's hybridization. We are going to get hybrid orbitals. Now let's look and see how that happens with group four. So to get hybridization, I'm going to merge the orbitals 
But before I do that, I'm gonna break up this pair. This pair of electrons is gonna get broken up and I'm gonna promote one of those to that third P. So now all four of these orbitals, the S and the three Ps, are going to hybridize to do something like this. I get four 100% equal orbitals, all the same shape, all the same energy, pointed in four different directions. This is called, really not very creative, an sp3 hybrid orbital. Why? Because one s and one, two, three p's went into making it. So sp3 hybridization creates a particular electron geometry because these four orbitals are gonna try and get as far apart from each other as possible. So here's where our marshmallows are gonna come in. What I want you to do, and this is by the way, how I get this Lewis structure for carbon. I didn't tell you when we were learning Lewis structures that hybridization happens, but now you know. This is why carbon forms four bonds instead of two like the original Lewis, um, box diagram implies. So now let's think about two new terms that we had learned. Electron geometry, molecular geometry, the number of bonding orbitals and the number of non-bonding orbitals. That's all gonna come into play when we figure out what the three-dimensional shape is. So originally I would have had one non-bonding and two bonding. But with hybridization, what do I get? I get four bonding orbitals and I get zero non-bonding orbitals. Okay, so that means my electron geometry, the geometry of all of the orbitals, as well as the molecular geometry, because I don't have any non-bonding orbitals, for group four atoms with single bonds, these two are gonna be the same. So let's figure out what that shape is. Okay, this is where the marshmallows are gonna come into play. So what I want you to do is with your marshmallows, I want you to, or whatever manipulative you have, try and create CH4. So you've got four H's that you're going to bond to your central carbon, okay? Now remember Vesper theory, electron pair repulsion. So how far apart can these four things get in three-dimensional space, not two-dimensional space? When we pick up, the, give it a try, and then we'll pick up the next video and see what shape you came up with.